In May, author Olga Tokarczuk became the seventh woman and the first Polish writer to win the coveted Man Booker International Prize. Already a multi-award winning author in her homeland, Tokarczuk says winning the Man Booker International puts her in another league. Kerry Alexandra went to meet her in London to talk politics, psychology and Poland's past, as well as the lack of women documented in history, what's behind it and how she's redressing the balance in her work. Now in its 50th year and still one of the most prestigious awards in literature, the Man Booker Prize is hard fought for. But how fair is the fight? Two thirds of winners in the last half century have been male and 80% of protagonists in winning novels male too. Something that appears to have been noted, with bookmakers William Hill now offering odds on the gender of the winner. In 2005, the Man Booker International Prize was launched recognising writers from around the world. And it seems the game has changed completely. Since 2005, an equal number of men and women have won the prize. This year's winner was Polish author Olga Tokarczuk for her novel, Flights. One of the most critically acclaimed and commercially successful authors of her generation, it's no surprise that Olga Tokarczuk is a household name in Poland. But the choice of her work as the winner of this year's Man Booker International Prize feels significant. A book about constant movement and the equal strength and fragility of the human state, there are perhaps reflections of the prize's own journey. The book is about mobility, travelling, be on move, um, uneasiness even, from one side, and as a contrary to something which is very stable, like our human body and human body which is uh, very fragile and mortal. So entire book is uh, spread between those two ideas. Perhaps it sounds abstract, but I, I would also say that this is a modern um, travel book, um, modern diaries, memoirs from, um, of traveling. A vocal critic of Poland's increasingly right-wing politics, Tokarczuk is as well known for her criticism of her country's past as for her award-winning literature, and the two regularly collide. Saying on Polish television that Poland had committed horrendous acts in its history, and then in a later interview that she was very naive to have thought it would be easy to discuss the dark areas of her country's history. After a film adaptation of her book, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, drew criticism, as a deeply anti-Christian work that promoted eco-terrorism. You're also an activist in Poland and your opinions have occasionally raised some eyebrows. How do you think your politics affect your writing? My uh, political point of view are connected with uh, very, very much with feminism. I also, I'm also very aware that uh, there is a kind of imbalance of the world and especially in literature. For, for instance, in Polish literature, I, sometimes I felt that it's a lack of strong uh, female characters. So, especially when you are writing a um, historical narrative, you have to base on uh, archives, on documents, and then you can realize that in archives, the only person are, persons are really written down in the history are men. So, in a way, creating the historical novel, you have to, to, to put a right balance into it, because the world without women is impossible to exist. Yeah, you know what I mean. There is no such a human being um, who is not um, using his political points of views in, in the creating the world in the novel, even if you really believe that you are not a political person. You are, in fact, a political person, because everything is political. Um, what uh, our characters in novels are working, if it is woman or man, uh, what uh, social class it is, uh, what is the point of view, how you describe the world outside. Of course, everything is political. I always try to give a voice to such a spheres which are not visible, not hearable. So it's a, because I believe that uh, the, describing the world from this uh, such a mainstream perspective we already have in, uh, in media and novel is something deeper. 
So novel is something always um, showing us something which is much more unusual, uh, forgotten, uh, mm, um, also um, not so not so present in, in our novel day, nowadays um, conversations. So, for instance, in my uh, in this book, which will be published here in the autumn, the perspective is uh, connected with uh, animals. They are very strong characters in this detective story because this is a detective story. So, yeah, because using mainstream uh, usual perspective for writing is just boring. So I always try to to look look for such a unusual, bizarre perspective. Olga Tokarczuk's use of structure is one of the things that makes her work stand out. She herself perfectly describes her work as constellation novels. She launches her stories into orbit for readers to examine like the night sky and draw their own pictures in the stars. Her work is very much about exploring things beyond the constraints of everyday life. You said that novels leave a wider space for you to explore life than perhaps the mainstream media. Have you used that space to look at the feminist angle and to look at characters and female characters who haven't perhaps been covered by other authors? My historical book is such a big and thick and it is 900 pages uh, and I was really exhausted after writing this book. And I think that for now I'm not going to come back to historical uh, stuff, let's say. I'm going to, I'm just uh, publishing in Poland collection of short story called Bizarre Stories, once again. And uh, yeah, but I think that if you, if, if a writer uh, doesn't have any new subject to write, you, he or she can always come back to the history and find out such a female characters and to use them because it is still um, empty land for exploring. You are a best-selling author in Poland. You've won a number of prestigious prizes there, but is winning the Man Booker International Prize something special? Of course it is. This is a very mm, great award. And for me, it means that I am going up to another level to be recognizable and better known uh, all over the world. The, the English language uh, market is always uh, very universal for writers uh, from such a small languages like mine, like Polish is. Man Booker's chair of judges, Lisa Apignagnesi, said we really felt this was a prize that had an interventionist quality. It allows writers to be better known in Britain and in the English language than they have been previously. She added, I think picking up flights will be an experience for anyone. Um, it, it's, it's a cornucopia of delights, really. Flights is only the third of Tokachuk's ten books to be published in English. One of the Man Booker judges said that some of your books haven't yet been translated. Are we likely now to see those translated? Uh, there are two of my books translated already into English. Um, it was like ten years ago, so they disappeared. But I think that will be republished once again. And I still have uh, two new books which will be present this year in the autumn, one of them. And uh, the other one, my Opus Magnum, huge epic historical novel, will be published here in Great Britain in next year, in 2019. Jacob's Book, the title is Jacob's Book. Jacob's Book is a story about a uh, mm, Jewish minority which uh, is living on the border between Polish Kingdom and Turkish Empire, Ottoman Empire. So there will be many in common in this book for you and for, for, for me, because it is uh, exploring those old culture borders between all those two cultures and languages. So it will be something special for, for Turkey, I think, for Turkish readers. Critic Kapka Kasabova from The Guardian said, Flights has echoes of W.G. Siebold and Milan Kunadera. Would you agree with that? Mm, that's a compliment really for me because I, I really love, I adore two of the, these writer, writers, but I think um, perhaps the fir first her association was that uh, 
we are more or less from this, the same culture circle, I mean from Central Europe and perhaps the, the way of telling story that atmos the, and atmosphere and landscape is similar. But I, I'm not so conv convinced that they are very similar to each other. Which authors over the years have inspired you, would you say? Oh, there are many such names. Uh, I grew up reading uh, Russian literature, uh, but also Kafka, which was very important for us. In the terms of language, um, I owe very much to Bruno Schulz, who is quite well-known uh, Polish writer, writing in an excellent Polish language, excellent. There is uh, nobody who can really um, measure with him. Yeah, so, and of course, I, as, a, as a teenager, I adored uh, William Faulkner. Uh, although, trying coming back to his work now, I thought that, um, yeah, this is not my, 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 my universe now. So many, many. I was, I am the reader as, as first, and then I'm writer as a second. So, I live in literature. You're a trained psychologist. What impact has that had on your work? How has it contributed to it, would you say? That was a good idea to study psychology, not uh, literature, I think. Um, I think that I owe uh, psychology this point of view which can show us that um, the, our reality worthy to be described is, on, is uh, based on many levels. So, uh, literature is the question of interpretation always, interpretation of reality, of the world. And also, uh, as a trained psychotherapist, I had the lessons, I have a exercise how to listen to people, how to um, hear their um, special voice. The novel's lack of a traditional narrative, for me, puts Tokachuk's clinically painted characters front and centre in the world she creates for them at the same time fascinating and yet accessible to the reader. Kerry Alexandra, TRT World, London. And if this view into Olga Tokarchuk's world has whet your appetite, the next translation of her work, an historical epic about life on the border of the Polish Kingdom and the Ottoman Empire, will be available in English next year. The 900-page tome is already being tipped to win even more literary awards once it's widely available in English.